Okay, cool. Apparently my OBS doesn't like me again today. Um, I am literally ready to wrap up the day. I've been sitting in this chair for a while. And I'm just hitting up Reddit for the last thing before I check, and I see um, a post here that caught my attention and made me decide to do this video. So I'm going to flip over my screen share. Um, here's the Reddit post, and we can kind of see the question is, can we create an additional ITIL ticket type or ITIL ticket type lookup? Um, this guy wants to do it. 87 Red wants to do it on for in his Halo because of co-managed customer requirements or whatever. There's a couple of reasons why you'd want to do a different grouping for ITIL uh, for reporting purposes and other uh, things. But the answer from Connor um, at Renata says, you can add them via the API. I'm not aware of it causing any issues. Now, this is like a trigger statement. A lot of people are going like, well, API, I don't know. That sounds scary. If I can't do it in the interface, I'm going to give up. Um, I commented that I've done it before, but it's it's a little bit harder to just walk through. So I didn't put like the specifics of what that would look like. And I decided that I'm going to showcase on a video um, one of my god mode moves, so to speak. You know, if you're, if you're back in the day to play Doom, IDQD gave you god mode um, and the ability to uh, do whatever you want, essentially. With Halo, basically, you always have that enabled as long as you as long as you can jump into the API. And so I'm going to showcase what that looks like on this video in a very easy, low effort, low barrier entry uh, way that can absolutely let you screw your system up and cause significant damage. So just be careful about what you're doing. Now that I've made that disclaimer, let's jump right into it. I'm going to close out the Reddit post and let's jump into our training Halo. We're going to go to configuration. What they're talking about is under tickets, ticket types, we have the ability to associate any kind of ticket type to an ITIL framework ticket type. And so Halo is very much ITIL aligned. We try to build the platform and the ticketing system in the ITIL framework uh, for many reasons we won't get into because this video is supposed to be short. Um, and uh, one of the things you want to do is uh, in certain cir circumstances, what I do is I take the alert ticket type and I actually change that to a different ITIL type of event. Uh, which is a valid I ITIL type, um, but it's not in Halo out of the box. And so the reason why we do this is because we take the alert, and then the alert doesn't necessarily mean we have to do something. It doesn't necessarily mean there's something that to work on. There's no incident necessarily. Um, and in some cases, the alert may result in a service request, You know, not necessarily an incident. And so with that being um, said, we don't like we have essentially three states of the alert. Alert comes in. The alert is an event that occurred. That event means we either have to acknowledge that alert and close it out, or we have to perform some sort of work, a fix, something broke, which is an incident, and then we go deal with that, or something's going to break and a change is required um, to account for whatever it is condition that we're looking for. And so in that case, it raises a service request. And so what we're doing, what I do in cir certain circumstances, the people who want this kind of workflow on their alerts, is I go ahead and I create that ticket, that ITIL ticket type of event, and then I move alert to it. So the way this works is under a configuration, we go to advanced settings and go all the way down to our lookup codes all the way at the bottom. We have the lookup codes area. And in here, we have impact level auto request groups. And in some of these situations, we do have the ability to do new where we can create brand new ones. But when it comes to request types specifically, the new button doesn't really exist. But we do have incident change request, service request problem, right? So these are the ones that we currently have. And we can see the ID numbers for each of them that exist. What I want to do is I want to make a brand new one. And so here's where the God mode thing comes into the very, very easy way to jump into the API without having any programming knowledge necessarily or anything at all. I'm going to right click, which you actually can't see on the screen share. It's kind of funny. And I'm going to go to inspect or otherwise known as opening up dev development tools of the browser. I'm going to dock it to the side of the window so you can kind of see it here. And I'm just going to use on the network tab. I'm filtered already for API. And I'm just going to make a change to one of these existing requests. I'm going to go to incident. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to clear everything on this side here. There's a clear button up here um, right next to the stop button. I'm going to hit that clear. And then I'm going to change this. Hit that clear one more time because I waited too long. I'm just going to change the name to incident T and I'm going to post it. Now I'm going to look for my post here. These gets are not important. The post is what's important. If I look at the lookup code and I just bring this over a little bit, I can see that the payload I'm sending is basically an ID number, the lookup ID number, the name that I changed it to. And you can see lookup ID number is one up here, right? So 
what I want to do is just essentially repeat this command, remove the ID number and specify a different name. And so in order to do that, watch closely, I'm going to right click on this lookup request, which you can't see, <laughs> which is really annoying. Thanks a lot, OBS. I'm going to right click on the lookup uh, um, line that ran, and I'm going to go ahead and hit edit and resend. And that's going to open up a new area down here. Notice if you paid attention down here, a new area opened up. I can come up and expand it a little bit. And it's going to basically allow me, I can expand this out a lot, to basically run an API call directly to the API lookup, right? It's got my query here. My headers are set with my authentication already configured. My body is right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the lookup name to be event. And I'm going to remove the ID number in here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And it's going to come back with a 201, which means it's successful. It came back with an ID number 23. Event is the new name. If I go back out of here and refresh, I now have another lookup code for event, which works just fine. I'm going to come back to my incident. I'm going to remove that extra T I added in just so I can steal and hijack that API call. So that's back to normal. I'm going to go ahead and close out this dev tools. I don't need it anymore. But what I do want to do is I want to go back to my ticket type that's going to use that new um, ITIL type. And I'm going to change alert to use the event type that I just created at this point. That's going to use that. And then I can go back to here, go into the event type. Now that I have a ticket type associated, I can go to the ITIL type and set my default ticket type in the event uh, this ITIL type is selected. And I can come in here and save that, after which I am done. And that's basically it. So that's my super short, super quick God mode version, cheat code way of getting into the API and doing a quick call. I can make, uh, I can do a request. I can do, once I'm authenticated, I can do whatever I want. Um, I can go make a change to an existing entity so I can capture that change I want to do and then edit and resend that request, swap out the ID number and make that same exact change to different areas as well. So another way this can um, be handy is potentially if you have a contract and you accidentally use the wrong start date on the contract. So under here, we the last video I did on the training, I created a contract. Once you create a contract, you cannot change the start date, assuming that there's time against it. Under periodic history, if we have any time consumed, we've got one hour here um, that was used. If we have any time consumed from time on a ticket, we can no longer adjust the start date of the contract because it's basically immutable at this point. But we can make that exact same change. There's nothing in the API stopping that from happening. So we can essentially create another contract for that client, grab the start date that you want to do from the API call, essentially swap out the ID number of the contract, which is up here, paste in the start date that format that you had collected from the new contract, and then modify that over the API. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the API. You can update your accounting integration, assuming it doesn't let you do that. You can do other things that would potentially be blocked from the interface as long as it doesn't break it. But please use caution and make sure you're not doing this on anything important or you tested it first in a UAT instance. Because like I said, the, API, the client has a lot of checks and balances in place that the API may not have. And so um, being able to access it easily and do things like that very easily has the potential for things to go very, very, very wrong very fast. Hopefully this was fun and helpful and useful to know. Leave your comments below, like and subscribe, and have a great rest of your night.